You've got some little dilemma for me, darling. I do. Some lovely laughs has wrote into us. Um, oh, 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 no. Is this a di- Is this one we've received? Yeah, it's a dilemma. Yes. Ca- you know I like one. this one. I, feel like I like lot- the Reddit random, but I always feel a little bit like my serotonin. I pair like a kitten whenever I know someone's actually sent us a message. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to The Smoking Area, where we deep dive into life's highs and lows. I'm Benji, your host, ready to bring you candid conversations, a listening ear, and a splash of late night excitement. Get ready to explore unfiltered discussions. Let's step into The Smoking Area. So, I've been dating this guy for a while and everything's perfect. I stay at his over the weekend and we have a great time. However, I'm really embarrassed with the bathroom situation. I'm okay Uh-oh. to pee. I'm okay to pee when he's around, but I'm really embarrassed to fart or poo. He- <laughs> Just saying that, sorry. Uh-oh. Um, he's asked me to go away for a long weekend to a log cabin retreat, and I've agreed, and I'm super excited about it. But it has now dawned to me that it won't just be a 24-hour time frame. I can't run to a shop or a restaurant bathroom to poop or fart. I'm going to be stuck in the woods with one bathroom to share. I need help on how I can either get over this fear or excuses or tricks to get away with it. Please help. Oh, the poo situation is always a really difficult one for me. Um, because even at a friend's, like, unless I absolutely love them and, again, like the last one, know them inside out, like old friends, yeah. people you come... People whose houses you've been in and you're comfortable with the house, then it's easy to go and drop kids off. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm so comfortable with you that I could literally get a job for Virgin Media with cable that I'd lay in your toilet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I would literally be absolutely fine. I'd be running myself a bubble bath, turn the tap <laughs> off with Big Turk, <laughs> shadow for you to clap kettle on, looking through cupboards. But when it's someone that you found there and someone it's you find attractive... In it's different and it's different sometimes i get the anxiety of like oh can i even crap in this toilet someone sat through other side and you put you put music on your phone and then you know they know he's having a shit because music's come up yeah. and you turn tap on but only you can hear tap on music they can hear tap a little bit your tinny phone and <laughs> yeah they can hear everything <laughs> i was they can once hear. with a guy who every time, like, I'd sleep with him and we'd do all sorts of things. And he'd get into the bathroom, like, straight after or, like, any other time and turn the tap on. And I'm like, how can you be embarrassed of peeing when you've just done all this to me or with me? Like, I don't understand. Unless it's just, like, a, um, like, just an instinct thing. But why are you turning the tap on while you're peeing? And I've just... No, that's that's different, though. That's, like, that's different, like, because you're in the moment of intimacy, so you don't feel vulnerable. You're letting yourself go in that moment. I'm but true. then going to the bathroom, no, I still, even even from past experience, even when you're in a committed relationship, don't fall into sloppy habits of accepting. Still keep it classy. Like, I used to rip raw farts out in front of my ex, and then that became a thing that we were both disgusted about each other <laughs> before we were like... Because as soon as there's something else going on, all the little things like that start to really annoy you, you know, after a fight and stuff, and it can just add add extra fuel to a fire. So I think keep it classy for as long as possible. Even if you're married, toilet behaviour, unless you're laughing with your mates or watching a comedian talk about it, I think you should keep it to yourself. Like, I never, even if I got married, I never want them to hear, see, think about me going and dropping kids off at pool you know what oh, I mean? Like, really? Yeah. Um, no. While I'm laying Ben eggs, you be like oblivious ben and keep eggs. yourself occupied somewhere else because that is not for me. Okay, It's then. just disgusting. What do you do then in a scenario like she's in? Like, say you go on holiday with them. You're in a mm-hmm. hotel room that's a very close. It's not like you go upstairs to the toilet. It's literally on the same floor, probably next I to the bed. What do you do? Because we're adults and we know when we can, when we need to go. We know when it's brewing. We know when it's due. We know how long until it's going to start breaching and be two inch cold. I'd be like, oh, do you know what? I fancy one of them chalky croissants from breakfast buffet and I'm going to go and get today's paper. There's a really interesting article that I can't find online. Um... Do you want an old front shop? And I go do it in reception. Perth, that's good. Yeah, that's a good thing. What about... 
same farting, as though. If, if, if you're on like... You're on a beach on the day. Well, farting you can actually hide. I'll tell you how in a sec. If you're on okay. a beach on... Just wait until you're out pole. Oh, I'm busting for a wee. And he'll say, just do it in pole. Don't be disgusting, Dave. Be- I'm off to the toilet. Do you want a beer on the way back? Oh, yeah, go on then. Drop kids off. Come back with a beer. He's done the wiser. And then you make a comment to throw him off. Oh, someone had done a poo in there. It's absolutely disgusting. I don't know how people can do that. So you're reaffirming that I don't poo. Yes. Some dirty <laughs> some dirty skip rats done one in there, but not me, Dave. Here's your beer. <laughs> Whoa. We're talking about it now in such a light way. Some people are going to laugh at all that. And some people are going to cringe at the, thought, the fact yeah. that we'd be talking about that. Like even me saying lay some cable for Virgin Media. Like they're going to be like, oh God, no. <laughs> some people are really triggered by it and some people yeah. aren't. Do you know that there are influencers in Dubai? You know, the, a lot of these girls that are models who are like on OnlyFans, big booby girls. Yeah. I watched a full interview and expose. They don't actually make that much money off OnlyFans. So to maintain that life in Dubai and to look like an influencer, it's all fake. We, we know it's all fake. Yeah. Like you can tell they're probably like the most miserable people inside. Like, yeah. yeah. To, to need all that. Um, they're actually people who've got poo fetishes, r- dirty, r- 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 filthy rich men with loads of money, hiring these girls as escorts and then requesting for an extra 500, 1,000, let me shit in your mouth and the girls are accepting it and more and more uh. and more of these girls from Instagram. So you're looking at them on Instagram looking all gorgeous with the veneers, but what you don't do is at night, they underneath them old man squatting with his chocolate starfish right in front of them veneers oh, and oh, 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 no. literally letting them poo uh, that's that's like that's not a fetish that's an abuse of power that's like how far can i get this girl to go yeah but these these girls are doing it willingly so that they can maintain the dubai lifestyle and they don't have to move back to england or whatever i've got a gross story about a friend that went to thailand with a poo thing do you want to hear it yeah, I mean, we're already talking about poo, so okay. yes. Okay, so he went travelling in Thailand um, with his friend and he got talking to an English barman out there and they got really friendly and this guy basically said, there's this private dinner that I'd like to take you to. It's very exclusive, but there's two spaces free and the person who runs it has agreed that you can come at basically like talk you into it i've got you in i've got you in you can get in you're my guest no one's gonna ask any questions darren you're on holiday (laughs) last time in thailand is that barry from birmingham who keeps leaving his wife once a month on a wednesday (laughs) barry (laughs) nice to see you is she still she's getting on a year about transferring yeah it'll be all right barry have a beer on me anyway darren you're in mate so come to this dinner okay so he's named darren now so Darren and his mate, they give them this address um, and they turn up at this address, a beautiful mansion, got guards with guns on the door, electric gate opens, they walk up this gorgeous driveway, knock on the door, the person who owns the mansion opens the door with his friend and there's like, yeah, You've yeah, just- yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. You've just really set the scene for me. Normally, you're terrible at speaking, and I tell you this all the time. Thanks. They walk up this gorgeous... I felt like I'm in a little storybook. Thank you, darling. You're, I'm, you've, I feel like I'm there. Am I Darren? <laughs> you are the Darren. You are. So they get inside, and then there's um, loads of... Everyone's in, like, a suit. They didn't wear suits. They were travelling, so they were in, like, T-shirts and shorts, so they felt really, like conscious about that they said they got in there and they were talking to the the friend that they know and the person who owns the property um and it was just really casual chat but everyone else was just stood in reception silent no one said a word he said he felt really uncomfortable and a bell rung and this door opened and it was like a beautiful dining room with a really long table there were candles flowers it was really dimly lit and they all sat down and in front of them was a plate and a knife yeah. and fork and there was like champagne on the tables and water and everyone sat down still in silence and they said he said it felt like three hours but it were probably only five minutes just because of how uncomfortable they felt and then Intense. another bell rung and the door opened and like i've forgotten how many people but say there were 20 men sat at this table 20 women walked in in just bra and pants and heels and he said they were absolutely stunning like drop dead gorgeous and they started walking around the table again everything was still in silence walked around the table and then one by one got up on the table and walked around in a circle in front like a of dog the when men. it's trying to get comfy exactly all walked around the table and they all stopped in front of each man turned inwards so they were that 
their ass was facing the men. Ass to face. Completely naked. So took the bra off, took their pants off, and then simultaneously, I can't say that word, sim, simultaneously, that one, simul, simultaneously, 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 simultaneously. <laughs> In unison, say it in unison, it in sounds unison, more regal. They squatted and started to shit. And he said the shit that came out of these girls were like a dark purpley red. And it was like, like you and I've been a red wine. Like moose came out of him and they shat on the plate. And then all the men just started digging in and eating it, like with knives and forks, like eating it. And Darren turned round to the bar owner that he knows and says, is this a fucking real? And he was like, yeah, don't worry. These girls have been fed a diet of only strawberries for like six weeks. Like they haven't been able to eat anything else. They drink water and they've got strawberries. So all that is is strawberries. And Darren was like, I don't think I can do this. And his mates took it in, like really enjoying it. Sure. Oh, and they said, are, did, who's told you this? Because this is, I can't believe it. This sounds like I'm on fucking Hostel, the movie, or I can't Eyes Wide say, Shut, I Eyes Wide Shit. If I told you who it was, you, you'd believe it straight away. Like the story, but we'll keep them private. Yeah, okay, well, this this sounds ridiculous, but you know what? It, nothing would surprise me because pe- influencers in Dubai are letting men shit in their mouths yeah. just so they can pay their rent. So did he tuck in? No, he left. He said, I can't eat it. He said, that's fine, but you can't just sit You've here. You've got to go. You've got to leave. So they, they just got up and left. That is the most disgusting thing that I've ever heard. How these girls are not malnourished. Someone needs to look into <laughs> labour laws in Thailand if they're only being fed a diet yeah. of strawberries because how are, they, how are they not dying? And regardless, if some... Mind you, saying that, devil's advocate, and I shouldn't be devil's advocate in this situation because I'm, <laughs> re, I'm repulsed right now. <laughs> there is a type of coffee that rich people drink that is actually coffee beans that have been eaten by an animal and then come out in poo. Oh, That's a thing. no. That's a thing. And caviar is fucking fish that have been pulled out of the water that were pregnant and stomachs cut Gutted. open and their fish eggs being put onto a plate and then posh <laughs> when is the strawberry shit moose coming around <laughs> disgusting and on that note i think that i've got nothing else to say i'm absolutely flabbergasted i've been benji my co-host has been faith the disgusting deplorable faith who knows people that Go to shit loose parties in Thailand. <laughs> Thank you for being in the smoking area with us. I hope that you're not all mortified and you will come back. Disclaimer, we're talking about actual shit. <laughs> wow, I'm going. Love you, bye. Love you, bye.